So started a new project, finished a new project. I'm going to explain to you folks what these are for. Uh, short story, they're for winterization. Uh, they're, uh, I guess you could call them temporary sea strainer caps. Um, the manufacturer of my uh, sea strainers, you can't find the caps with the, the nozzles in them. So I made my own. Um, did not figure this one out for myself. I owe a lot of credit to two other YouTubers, uh, Boogaloo and um, My Boating Life, I think it's his name is. And I'll, I'll link them below so you guys can see them. They're also linked over, I think, to the left on my page. So if you like this, big thumbs up. Subscribe, please. Leave some comments. Um, I have a way of winterizing. It worked okay last year. Hopefully this works uh, a little better. Uh, I think all of you know it's crampy down in those engine compartments, lots of scrapes, bruises, turning yourself into a pretzel. So I'm hoping this this uh, approach makes it a lot easier. All right, watch on. All right, what's today's project? Walking into the basement. This is my old house. I'm going to show you my attempt to uh, come up with a winterization kit. Um, I don't take credit for this. Uh, Boogaboo and I think it's My Boating Life both have videos on this and both have helped me. Last year I did it with this thing, it's called See Something, I can't remember. <coughs> Basically you take the lids off the top of your C strainers, you push this in and you clip it in. It, it worked, it was clunky and clumsy, leaked a little bit, but this year I'm going to try to create my own um, kind of caps for the strainers. The vision is for that guy to go in there, for me to hook up those to this plastic. Eventually this is going to go into a bucket where I can fill it with the, the antifreeze uh, with a valve. That's what this is. So I'm going to fit that into a bucket. Uh, that'll attach to this hose and then that'll attach to this, which I've got my measurements from the boat. If you can see those. Those are for my boat and they might be for yours. This one is for the, the main engines, one quarter inch thick. So I bought this piece of oak from Home Depot six inches wide it doesn't have to be circular i'm just gonna i in my case six inches all around is gives me enough space and then five inches between my holes those are the two holes that hold on the cap to the strainer and then the ac one same design just different measurements right um, quarter inch thick uh, four inch wide and then three inches between the holes when i say between the holes i'll be drilling two holes that will eventually uh, this will sit on top of the street strainers. I'll spin the wing nuts on and it'll attach. So in this video, I'm just going to show you how I build it. I got some spray adhesive. I got some rubber foam. I got all this from Home Depot. Uh, looks like I'm missing something, but I can't tell. As I build it out, I'll show you. But the vision is cut my lids, spray foam rubber on it, drill a hole to seal this into it, and then this these hoses not these hoses of course but this big hose will go into that i can spin it on and the other end will go into this which will be attached to a bucket so uh, more to come on that hang in there all right so i can't remember the diameter of these holes what the diameter of the nut excuse me bolt is on the c strainer that the wing nut attaches to not sure what that is um, so I'm just going to use, I'm not sure what size this is, but I'll just go, probably hopefully it'll be a little bit small. I have a drill and bits on the boat. So when I get back, get this to the boat, I can always make this hole bigger. Let's see if I can do this with one hand without this piece of wood spinning around. I doubt it. There's nothing magical there. I know there's some hard wood that just doesn't bend and flex. This is oak, as you can tell, it's a bit hard to drill through. Is good. All right, and there goes everything. So I'll do the other three right now. All right, got my holes circled, and all I did is I used that center measurement at the cross, put that on center, circled it with the pen, like so, and now I'll figure out how I want to cut it. I don't have a, a bit that large or a hole saw. Um, actually, I might. I might have some bits that big. Let me do some digging around. Voila! Forgot that I had these. So this is one inch. All right, there's the one inch, excuse me. I'm going to go seven eighths. 
seven eighths. Actually, I'm gonna go I think a little bit bigger, smaller than seven eighths. I'm gonna make it a tight fit. So it looks like seven eighths will work pretty good there. I might adjust that. So uh, yeah, I've had these forever. Forgot that I had them. Hopefully, you can cut through this oak wood uh, with that Dewalt battery wrapper to drill. I'm sure I can. This one turned out perfect because I went slower and let it chew away uh, at the wood. So there you go. Top, bottom, bottom, top doesn't matter. I might need to go a little bigger. I'm not sure. We'll uh, we'll experiment. So as my late dad used to say, sometimes you have to be smarter than what it is you're working on. So I put a couple nails in here to hold this in place and drilled it out. And I did go up to 15 16 So let's see how that fits. All right, so I ended up going up to one inch. And I had to use some bigger nails because it flung them off and it's gonna work. It's gonna, it's gonna be a good tight fit, but it's gonna go. So for those of you like, Greg, you're a dumbass. Why not just use a clamp? Well, I thought about that and I got some clamps, but I don't have any big enough. I got some bigger ones out in the shed and garage. Just didn't feel like going to get them. So a couple nails held this in place while I continue to drill on it. And uh, you know, I gotta be really careful when I tap this down. So I don't want to mess the threads up, so we'll figure that out as well. Voila! So what I did, got that laying on there, on the hole, I'll just show it over here. Put this guy, right, over top of the hole, protect, to protect those threads. This is a softer wood, some kind of old shelving board I had laying around. And this is a, I can show you guys. A couple swings of a hammer. She's in there. I mean, it's not perfect. I'll do some cleanup. Sorry. I'll do some cleanup. I'll put a little caulk in there. I might pull it back out. Put some caulk around there as I push it through there or tap it through there again. And there we go. So the next step for me is to cut the rubber that's going to go underneath this, right? So it's going to go like this. This rubber is to help get a nice seal to the strainer. Um, got this on Amazon. It was a couple bucks. It might be too thick. Um, we'll see. I'm not going to know until I get to the boot, unfortunately. This is a quarter inch. Um, it's going to be close, so we'll see. I'm going to cut this now with a box knife, and uh, we'll take you to the next step. All right, so I got the rubber on, and that's what he said. Um, yeah, I actually had to repeat the same steps I did for drilling, because this is some pretty hard stuff here. So yeah, put it on here. Drilled out the plastic hole, drilled out the two small holes. Used my nails again. I don't have clamps and uh, there's not the finished product. I'm going to have to use the spray adhesive. I don't know where that other is. That's what I bought for that. We'll see how it works out and I'll let you know. Alright, it's time for the fun part. Put the uh, spray adhesive on. You shake it, which I've done. Spray it six to eight inches apart, or excuse me, away. Let it sit for about a minute and then you press them together. And there's no magic here, but I'll, I've already done one. I'll show you what I've done. I can do this with one hand. sit for about a minute which is kind of cool I got a timer here on the on the thing I don't think you guys are too concerned about waiting for a minute but hey let's just show you around my basement I live in a really old house this is the basement that used to be a dungeon that I put a lot of time into painted the walls did the floor brought a TV down here that I've literally never turned on well turned on to make sure it worked those are photos from my mom's place when she passed away I took them that's a washing machine, dryer. So what you do in old homes, you make things work. My toolbox. Uh, has it been a minute? It's getting close. What I'll encourage you to do too is make sure you remember the holes. Everything should line up, but mine are a little bit off. So here we go. stuff that once it sticks it sticks. So I'm going to flip it, take a spare piece of wood, put some pressure on it, hold it for a, a bit. Now I'm putting some good pressure. Again I hope this is not going to be too thick with the rubber to uh, to bolt down with the wing nuts. I've got a bad feeling it will be. This rubber is pretty stiff too. It's not flexible. I think I saw where uh, my building life used some shelving paper, which is much thin, 
so I might have to end up going that route once I get to the boat. Boat's about an hour and a half away, so I'll be videotaping later how that turns out. So uh, here's your finished products. Voila. Still not really good at this camera. Sorry, you're not getting sick. There's the finished product for the strainer size. That'll act just like the cap on the strainer. See? All right, thanks.